Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So this is the topic for today. That's the day in the life of a developer, especially as a Salesforce developer. Um, so last week, I had a chance to present this topic at Christchurch Salesforce user group. So Christchurch is a city in New Zealand. Um, so I thought, right, so why not I make a YouTube video, you know, explain, you know talking about this. Uh, because I do understand that, right? Not everyone gets a chance to tune into a country specific user group. So, you know, and since you guys know me from my YouTube channel, so I thought I might as well uh, make this video for all of you guys. Um, so this is just me talking, right? There's no slides. There won't be any, any fancy pictures or, or a video. It's just me talking, right? So this is pretty simple, old school. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that most of you might be looking to uh, enter into the Salesforce space, especially in the development space, or some of you can relay, right? They might be working as a developer or as a Salesforce architect, uh, or for that matter, you know, um, any other task associated with the Salesforce. So this topic is specifically targeted at Salesforce, so you, if you are a Python developer or a C Sharp developer or Java developer, it's pretty much the same, except that I'll, I'll be using uh, some of the Salesforce terminology, so it might be a bit off compared to other tech, right? So I work as a uh, tech architect, Salesforce tech, uh, platform architect. Uh, I can't reveal the name of the client. I can't reveal the name of the people I work because I didn't take the permission. So I really can't talk about it. But I'll just, let's say, I will say I will program an agency, right, as a customer. So that's that's it in generic sense. Um, so my main role is a platform architect. But that being said, right, I end up in doing a lot of developer work every day, which is something I really enjoy. Um, so... So my day started usually at eight in the morning. So I start with a coffee because I cannot start my day without coffee, right? I often joke this with my partner that if the coffee disappears from the planet Earth, I might have to leave the planet Earth or find a substitute for the coffee because I cannot function uh, without coffee. Coffee is the one thing in, in, in my life I cannot live without, right? All right, so I start my day with a coffee. I have coffee with my partner and then I start I start looking at you know emails usually, um, you know perhaps you know closer to half past eight. So I'm pretty slack in when it compares when it comes to emails. I don't usually get a chance to look at the email during the daytime. My inbox is pretty much filled, right? So in a week, I usually end up in seeing like 600 emails, right? I most of the time I don't read it. Right, and the people I work with then normally sends me message to the team, or if if it's very urgent, the client. You know, we normally connect to customer with the teams. So they usually ping me, right? They say, hey, can you look at this ticket? Can you look at that ticket, right? So uh, so usually it's not a problem uh, for me on that perspective. So email usually, right? It's company emails, companies updates. Anyway, my boss give me all information. So I normally be pretty slack. I, I, I understand that it's it's not really a great habit. So. Um, so I normally try to clean up my email. That's the thing I do in the morning. I say, oh, okay, shift delete, shift delete, shift delete. So I usually end up in cleaning like 50 emails a day. And and the end of the day, I will see mm, it's gone back again. All right. So then I st start looking at the previous ticket, pre um, close to, you know, half past eight. And then start looking at the, the previous day task. Sometimes I leave the task. Uh, you know, usually when you work in a development story, right, it's not a day ticket, right? It's usually lasts for four to five days. So you finish a task, say, at five in the evening, and then I pick up the task the next day. So that if there is no task, then I go to the storyboard. Usually we do Jira. So look at the storyboard. If there's a new ticket assigned to me, I pick up the story and start working on it, right? And then half past nine, I got to stand up. So just usually, you know, like an, we follow a sprint. Um, so you usually have a stand up and and usually tell the status what it did what it working on so kind of stuff right and so after that i usually um, get involved a lot with the design meeting because as i said my role is a platform architect so i do get involved with different teams right because uh salesforce uh the place where i work right i mean the, usually the agency work, uh 
who I work for, they have a lot of integrations with Moolsoft, you know, AWS and other stuff, right? So we usually have a meeting with design meeting with different teams. Even with sometimes a different Salesforce team, they, they bring up a topic, they, they, they create a design paper, and they bring on table, and we talk about the pros and cons. And sometimes, you know, I raise a ticket, I raise a paper, and I, I give a talk, but this is exactly what we're going to build. And these are the pros and cons. These are different options. We're going to pick this, we're going to pick that. And maybe a lead architect will say, hey, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that kind of stuff, right? So that's not every day. So it just happens once in a week. But um, so, and then I carry on with my ticket, right? So the one thing I just wanted to tell you guys that just because, you know, someone is a developer in the Salesforce space, it doesn't mean that that person end up encoding whole day, right? Um, the developer means you could be working on an Apex ticket, it could be working on LWC, could be working on flows, could be working on page layout. So I'm, I'm just talking from a tech develop, developer perspective. I'm not talking about functional developer, right? Functional developer means someone who works in the flows, someone who works on, on page layout, someone who works on creating an object or creating a field, permission set, profiles, that kind of stuff, right? Um, when I talk about tech developer, I mean someone who works on integration functionality, although you can do integration using external service, I do get that, uh, but in general sense, right? Uh, I'm talking from a tech developer perspective. And then, you know, I, you know, I usually uh, eat at home because I work from home. So I've been, um, I've just been working from home for the past five years, right? I, I don't commute because I live in a small town and I, I love to stay in a small town. And I'm an introvert person, right? I'm not introvert when it comes to asking questions or, or dealing with uh, people in professional space. Right, because that's something business needs it, and I really expect. I, I do understand that business expect me to be extraordinary in getting the requirement, getting the stuff done, working very well with the team members. You know, having a healthy relationship. I appreciate that. I really love to do that. But when it comes to personal life, I don't. I don't talk to people after work. After five, I just don't hang out with my coworkers. They just don't exist for me after five. That's the way. I, I always rolled since since I started my professional career. I keep my work and personal life very, very separate, right? And that's really helped me, right? Because at the end of the day, your coworkers are not your friends. They are your uh, the people who work with, right? And it's it's very important you maintain a healthy working relationship, but you don't have to become friends with them, if you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, at least that's how it works in New Zealand. I'm not sure about the other part of the world. So, um. And then again, I, I would say that I shouldn't be making a generic statement. Like I said, it works in New Zealand that way. Uh, people are different, right? Some people might like to, may like to, you know, mingle more after work, you know, go out for a beer or something, right? But I just you know, prefer not to do that. So that's me. So I usually, <clears throat> sorry, Dagger. So I normally eat uh, lunch at home. So usually spend like half an hour and I go for a walk or just do, uh, you know, work out. Uh, depends, right? If I if I go for a walk, I usually do work out after the work. If I <clears throat> decide not to go for a walk and do the weight training, so I do that during the lunchtime at home. So because I got every gear at home, so I train in my basement, so it works for me. Um, then after work, after lunch, right? I normally carry on with my tickets, or sometimes I got pulled into other meetings. Uh, sometimes sprint review meetings. Uh, sometimes. I do attend the uh, you know architecture working group meeting, <clears throat> and then we have a dev catch up at the end of the day. So just to see if anyone is having any problem, um, then I often get involved with the uh, deployment stuff um, <clears throat> because we do deployment every week. Um, so I do help the team with uh, deployment. So usually with the cherry picking and other kind of stuff, right? Um, so we don't use the uh, chain set. We use the package with deployment. So, yeah. Um, and then Friday is the best day of my week because I don't have any meetings. And I start my day at 8. And I usually uh, reserve a complex ticket for Fridays uh, so that I can focus and work from 8 to 4. And I finish up 4 because I normally skip lunch on Friday because like I said, Friday is my focus day week, no meetings. I can do whatever I want, whichever ticket I can pick up. Um, 
so yeah, I mean, that's a luxury. <laughs> I've been fortunate that I have that luxury in the team. Um, and team members are great, right? We work very well with the team. And I mean, I don't talk in general with the team members unless it to do with the work, because obviously, right, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm very extroverted when it, come, when it comes to asking a requirement, talking to customer, getting to know the problem, you know, finding a solution together, brainstorming. But I don't generally ask people how they're doing or, I mean, I know I should, but I'm generally, I'm a kind of person, right, who just prefer to keep it to myself, right? If somebody has a problem, I believe they should be able to, you know, sort it out themselves, whoever they wanted to talk, because I'm not the kind of person, right? I'm not in, um, I'm not a psychologist, right? I don't usually listen to people's stories. At work, I believe that you get paid to do the work, and that's exactly what I'm interested to do, so. At the same time, building the healthy relationship with your coworkers, right? Means if they need help with the ticket, I always help them. If they need help with any Salesforce functionality, I'm often willing to help them. If they need any help with the architecture decision, always willing to help them. But if they need any help with the personal stuff, I often tell them I'm not the right person to talk to it. So, you know, at least you gotta be honest, right? So that's how my day normally looks like, okay? Now, you as an aspiring developer, right, you might say, hmm, that's not really fun because I'm not an architect and obviously my role might be different. Okay, so I'm going to st start talking what it means to be a junior developer, what it means to be an intermediate developer, what it means to be a lead or principal developer, right, or senior developer. If you're starting as a, as a, a junior developer, Right. I've been a junior developer you know, for a while when I was young. I mean, I started programming when I was 10 years old. I started using a basic. So I started, uh, I got into programming because I've been passionate about programming, not because of any money. Because when you're a 10 year old kid, who cares about the money, right? It's the thrill, it's the fun of getting stuff done, right? You type something, you get an output. That was, that was like a, how do I say, right? A kid in a candy store, right? I mean, even today, I feel like a kid in the candy store when I get to work on a complex functionality. Right? That's one of the reasons why I don't like to be a pure solution architect. I like to do 50-50 because it's like, you know, you suggest someone um, how to make a pie, right? And then at the end of the day, if you don't get a share, or at least if you don't get to taste that pie, it just don't makes no sense, right? So that's the reason why I love to code. I mean, I have slowed down in programming. No, I, I don't code like I used to do you know, many years ago. I mean, I'm not that old. I'm saying I got like 10 years ago or, or eight years ago, I used to code a lot, right? Uh, now I don't code much. Um, I build, I, I like to work on complex functionality. That's, or, or sometimes, you know, I don't, I don't like to do like a label change or fixing a caption. That's pretty boring. It's, it just, way below my pay grade because it's not worth keeping me in the team doing that stuff right because i'm an expensive resource at the end of the day so that's the way i look at it so if i think i'm not contributing i prefer to leave right because that's the way i'm looking at it. that's the way i look at it every time that's my personal opinion though okay sorry I digress let me go back to the 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 junior developer stage if you're an aspiring sales for junior developer right the day will be most the, the day in the life of a junior developer will be like you will be involved in a lot of bug fixing. You'll be involved in um, in shadowing a senior developer because obviously it's very important you guys to learn from a senior developer and you will be involved in a code review process because obviously, I mean, I'm talking about an idle scenario. It varies from company to company, but um, usually how it should happen, that's the way I'm, I'm going to present. Um, so code review, in my personal opinion, is very important because otherwise how will you learn, right? And in, because that's where the senior developer comes in the picture. The, the role of a senior developer is just not to code, right? Just to mentor a junior developer, to explain to them the coding standards we have in place, um, help them with the code reviews to say how if the code is correct or not, um, and, then, and then to help them with any, any tech issues, right? So maybe with the, the code merge or cherry picking, or maybe help them with CI/CD. You know, if they're starting out for the first time, usually junior uh, developers might struggle with the CI/CD. Sometimes they've been given tasks to even create an entire new pipeline, right? So if, if you are someone who's pretty new to it, 
then most likely you will end up struggling there. So that's where the senior developer come into picture. And then you won't be expected to mentor anyone because you're a junior, right? And the one uh, the advice I would always tell to junior developers, be open to new challenges, right? Don't enter software development just for the money. I've seen in many culture people just enter into software development because they have no freaking passion for it. And that's not really great in my opinion, right? You should only do the stuff because you're passionate about it. I do appreciate the fact that money is important, but money is not the only factor that should be driving your career, right? You should be driven by passion. You should be driven by innovation. You should be driven by, uh, you know, problem solving mindset, right? You should be driven by, you know, uh, a passion to create something to make a world a better place. And if you think that's not my job, that's fine. That's each one has their own personality, their own perception. But I'm saying that if you enter a software development field, or for that matter, any field without a passion, you will get burned out eventually. Because when S goes sideways, then you will end up in a lot of difficulties trying to come up with you know, scenarios to keep your job. And look at you know Twitter layout, right? I'm not saying what Elon did is right. I mean, I wish he should have done in a better way. I wish he should have shown some empathy towards the people. I, if you ask my opinion, I'm in favor of firing incompetent people, right? Any single day. I don't care if it's a 10,000 or 100,000 people. But if you have a senior developer or, or a developer who is extremely passionate, right? Who've been working in a company for eight to nine years, the firing them over Twitter is absolutely ridiculous and disrespectful. That's the way I look at it, right? That's why I often believe you should have a leader in the company who should have an eye for nourishing the right talent and encourage them, right? Because if you encourage and motivate someone, right, in the right way, you can really get the best out of the person. And you will see your company, you know, doing amazing uh, progress in, over the long run because you, because people will love to work for you. That's the main thing, right? You, if people know that they have a support system in place, they can reach out to your boss if they're going through a difficult stage in their life. And if, if the company is willing to look after them, they will indirectly look after your company. That's the way I look at it. So that's, even though I'm a big fan of Elon Musk, right? But I don't agree with the way he fired people. Absolutely not. So, okay. So that's about the, the junior developer, right? And I'll always say, be passionate, right? Just don't get into the profession for the money. Yeah, money, you will make eventually a lot of money if you really enjoy your job, if you start producing, if you start making a lot of good stuff, building cool projects, uh, building components, uh, building uh, solutions which really brings a lot of money to your customer, uh, to your firm, then obviously the company will reward you with a lot of money. And then comes to the intermediate stage, right? This is an interesting uh, stage in the developer career. Uh, because you're not a junior, right? You have reached, maybe you will have like four to five years experience. Um, I don't consider someone with three to four years experience as a senior developer, right? Because it's too early. Uh, I don't consider somebody with four years experience as a senior developer. Absolutely not. I call them as intermediate developer, right? Um, so someone with four years experience or five years experience, intermediate developer, right? Uh, or borderline uh, senior, not senior yet. Okay, so let's say four years experience. So someone with four years experience, so the expectation will be uh, your day will pretty much looks like a junior developer, except that you will be given an opportunity to mentor junior developers. You will be more involved with a senior developer, perhaps with the studying coding standard. You might be asked to help, uh, you know, hey, have a look at this document. I created the coding standard. What do you think? Can we make an improvement on it, right? Um, and you might be even invited for... Uh, interview process, right? Sometimes you will be given an opportunity to interview uh, a junior developer, right? For if, you're, if your company is looking for an opportunity. Um, <clears throat> you might be even invited to give demos, right? Presentations on a, on a functionality you built because usually, uh, I mean, sometimes companies do encourage junior developers to give demos about the functionality they build, but some of the companies I've seen, they're a bit reluctant. They kind of, assume that the, the junior developer can, might mock up during the demo. So the company uh, usually sideline them on that case. I've seen that on various occasions. I'm telling from my own personal experience, but some companies might prefer to give them opportunities. So it's a case by case, right? 
Okay, so intermediate developers will usually work on you know, more complex functionality. Uh, they have more command on the tech stack, right? They will be more comfortable writing flows in a better way. Maybe they know how to use design patterns a little bit in a better way. They don't have more command over say command pattern or build a pattern. When they build the code, they might make the code in a more abstractive way. So, you know, and they might be willing to share that information with the junior developers. So usually the day pretty much looks the same and they might get involved in some of the meetings as well, right? Um, and then comes to the senior developer, lead developer, principal developer. They usually they wear multiple hats, right? In some companies you don't have tech architects, so the lead developers takes the role of it. And in some companies you don't have developers, so the architect takes the role of a developer. Depends on the project you're working on, right? One of the projects I worked on, I've been a, um, uh, so I worked as a solution architect on that project, but still I end up encoding there. So, so yeah. Um, and then the, the lead developers usually involves in building coding standard, setting up a pipeline. Um, you know, they're usually involved in mentoring. Sometimes they even involved in performance review. Uh, they often involved in interview process. They get involved in presentation, uh, presenting demos. Uh, they often get involved in uh, solution design, functional reviews. Um, and senior developers often work, get to work cross-functional with the BAs or you know, project managers or product managers, um, right? And with solution architects, uh, sometimes with uh, different stakeholders like CTOs and all kind of stuff. So the, the life of a, uh, the engineer, so, so I actually don't call developers as an engineer unless you're working on a compiler or, or a core engineering problem. So Salesforce engineer sounds a bit weird to me because we are not engineering anything. We're just building a solution or like a developer. And that is not really an engineering. We're not solving a core engineering problem here. Right? I mean, I do understand that if you're working on a compiler team, if you're working on a core deep learning team, if you're working on a nanotech team, if you're working on a, um, uh, how do I say, a neural network team, right, where you're building, a, where you're trying to solve an engineering problem, a co complex software engineering problem, and building a, a, a software which can touch millions of life in a positive way, that is software engineering for me. Uh, otherwise, writing the flows, that's not a software engineering. That just drag and drop stuff, right? There is no software engineering associated with that. But yes, if you are using design patterns, if you're using, um, if you're building a software, right, with the proper uh, software uh, construct in, in with software principles and software architecture, then I would say that is a kind of software engineering. And yeah, some developers do get involved in software engineering. They do build stuff. But I've seen some countries, everyone, they call themselves so software engineer. But you're building on a work in a flow, right? That's not freaking software engineering. Absolutely not. I mean, that's just like calling, you know, I touched a rocket. I call myself as a rocket engineer. That's not how it works, right? So, yeah, so... Now, I'm not sure after this talk, you might say, hmm, this is pretty boring. I don't want it to be a developer. So in development, like I said, right, you got to have fun at the end of the day, right? Think about this way. You spend 40 hours of your life every week, right? So might as well do a job which you enjoy, right? Because people are stingy when it comes to spending money, but they're not stingy when it comes to spending the time out of their life we are not getting younger each day, right? We're getting older each day and we are losing every hour of our life. The most valuable thing in life is your time. It's the most valuable currency. The, the sooner people realize it, we can see a better, th you know, innovation happening on this planet. So it's got nothing to, nobody cares you own Ferrari or Maserati. I mean, it's for your own comfort, right? But if you don't value your time, if you don't, you should feel pride the work you do right so that's the way i look at it and now one of the thing i would tell you the advice which my mentor gave me um which might help you right if you are going to be a software architect architect the solution in such a way that you will be the one who's going to build it and you will be the one who's going to use it so if you're going to architect a solution and then when you wear a developer hat and you say mm, it's very complicated 
then you need to go back to the drawing board and change your approach. And if you are satisfied with the architecture framework and you're going to build it, you build it in such a way so that if you are a user, you should feel happy using the product, right? If you feel um, stressed and if you're not happy with the interface, then you as a developer need to go back to the drawing board and think from a user perspective. So a lot of things goes in in a developer life, right? The reason why I'm telling you all this, uh, the life of a developer comprises of all of the stages I mentioned, right? And, you know, customer satisfaction, you know, building a right product, uh, you know, feeling passionate about your job, making good use of your time, you know, when to say no to a functional requirement. And you might have to sometime work on an estimate. So you need to, you know, be, I mean, don't be, uh, how, do, how do I say, don't be a hero and, and instead of 10 hours, you just say, hey, all I can do in an hour. And then you end up in struggling and then going back to your project manager to say, hey, I was wrong. It might take another 16 hours of my time. So you just, you know, always work on your estimate. Just give a rough estimate. And just That's why. Uh, and always be a proactive learner, right? And the, one of the important things as a developer, never stop learning, right? Um, when you get free time, say some companies do allocate uh, say, you know, two to three hours in a week so that you can work on a tech stack. And, you know, I, I personally, what I do, I tell you, right, I train junior developers in the company I work. I take an initiative to train them uh, once in a week. I did that for two months. Uh, sometimes I give presentations on any, I pick up a Salesforce topic and I said to my boss, I wanted to present this topic to the wider Salesforce, Salesforce group in the company. Say external service, uh, maybe Jit Handler, just in time, uh, you know, uh, sometimes I wanted to talk about the platform event-based flow or event-driven architecture. You know, the, it's it's kind of uh, helps me because first the people get to know me in the in in the company. Second, I get an opportunity to team other people, and third, I get an opportunity uh, to learn new things, right? Because when you wanted to present, we always make sure that you give your best, right? So. Yeah, and then, you know, in some days, right, I mean, people who work from office, they, you know, they have the Friday beers, or right? especially in New Zealand. I used to have that when I used to work from office. So this is all a part of a developer, right? And the most important thing I would say that always keep yourself fit and healthy, right? Uh, sleep on time, you know, take good care of your health, you know, eat the eat good quality food, right? Um, and and take take look after yourself right that's that's very important and look after your mental health which is very important people don't talk about mental health and this is very important right if you're struggling with some something you know talk to your partner or talk to you know a support group you have in your company right? there's no harm in talking about it right if something bothering you it's very very important to talk about it in my personal opinion right rather than building up inside you and making it worse just talk about it uh, with someone you trust, right? And someone you, who you can, you know, reach out. So, you know, developer life involves a lot of things, right? We are human beings. We, you know, our emotions varies from day to day. Some days we, we things are, you know, things that's going on in our personal life might affect our work, right? But that being said, right, if you know somebody at, in your company, like your boss or your, you know, support person, right? Some companies have, you know, support group for mental health. You know, if you if you're com if you're comfortable reaching out, you should do right. I mean, there's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, some people don't talk about it, which I believe they should, because you know, whatever affecting your health, you should talk about it, because we all have a moral responsibility to look after our health, and the people around us, right? Like like a family and kids and whatever. So yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover. I hope that's informative, right? I'm sorry I dragged a bit longer than I anticipated. You know, right? I sometimes talk too much. You know, that's you know, even though I'm an introvert, but you know, in YouTube I talk a lot. So uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk. So I hope you guys have an amazing Monday. Adios.